Mr. Jacobs, Ms. Swan. Yes, present. Thank Jake, you. Uh, Trust Trustee Jacobs. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our organizational meeting uh, for the Upper Canada District School Board. It's a very special meeting this evening. And before uh, we proceed beyond the call to order, I'd like to make sure that we uh, welcome and acknowledge people in our gallery this evening, including Mr. Derek Haim, who's uh, an education officer with our uh, uh, Ottawa Regional Office for the Ministry of Education. We're very pleased that he's here this evening and that the uh, ministry has acknowledged and uh, and uh, honors us with uh, their presence this evening um, this is a special meeting uh, for the board uh, or nearly as you know as the as the director of education I wouldn't be chairing the meeting but um, since this is an organizational meeting the Education Act and our and our own bylaws requires that the uh, uh, the CEO or the director of education presides until the election of the uh, chair so we'll start off our meeting um, uh, through our our usual uh, practices of O Canada and our roll call and then from there we'll uh, begin with um, uh, uh, with the uh, nominations for the position of chair for the Upper Canada District School Board. Can I ask if you would all please rise for the singing of O Canada. <coughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and again, welcome trustees to our meeting for uh, the 6th of December 2017, our organizational meeting for the Upper Canada District School Board. It's time for our roll call, and we'll confirm who is present at tonight's meeting. Trustee Armour. Present. Trustee Karkner. Present. Trustee Cram. Present. Trustee Jacobs. Present. Trustee Wendy McPherson. Present. Trustee Bill McPherson. Present. Trustee McAllister. Present. 
Trustee McDonald. Present. Trustee McMillan. Present. Trustee Richards. Present. Trustee Swan. Present. Student Trustee Marshall Wilson. Present. So trustees, at this point uh, in our agenda, um, we're now moving to the election of the uh, chair of the, of the board for the period of December 6, 2017 to November 30th, 2018. Um, I wish to uh, confirm that we received uh, one nomination uh, at this point. And um, just to confirm, we have a nomination from Susan Richards to nominate uh, uh, Trustee Jeff McMillan for the position of the chair of the Upper Canada District School Board. Uh, Mr. McMillan, do you, uh, do you accept the nomination? <clears throat> See if there's any other nominations, a call for any other nominations for the chair of the board. And a second call to see if there's any nominations for the chair of the board. I would submit to the board that we now have no further nominations, that we would uh, close the uh, nomination process. And may I have a motion that the nominations for the position of chair be closed? Trustee Karkner, second by Trustee McAllister. Would you please cast your votes? I'm offline. And the motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Chair. a second to to thank everyone for um, believing in me again uh, in the uh, last seven years with this board that I've been a trustee uh, the um, vice chair for three years and this is going to be my fourth year as chair I've uh, worked very hard on your behalf to uh, represent this uh, position with integrity and I promise that I will continue to do so so thank you very much for your support it means a lot to me Okay, moving forward, We're looking at the first vice chair, uh, I have received the following nominations. There is only one that I have. And this is a nomination by myself, I'm nominating Carol Kirkner for the position of first vice chair of the Upper Canada District School Board. Do you consent to the nomination? Yes, sir. Thank you. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? I'll ask the third time, are there any further nominations? Seeing there are none, I have a motion that the nominations for the position of first vice chair be closed. Actually, I should have done that first. <laughs> Trustee McDonald, Trustee Richards, and um, we'll vote on that first, and then we'll do the, the motion for that. I said it myself. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> That motion carries. So I need a motion uh, that um, I got my motion. Congratulations. <laughs> you think I've never been in this seat? <laughs> so 
next one. <clears throat> okay, this, the next is the uh, nominations for the uh, second vice chair position. For this position, <clears throat> I have received three nominations. I'll begin with the first. It's uh, Wendy McPherson, Trustee Wendy McPherson nominates uh, Don Cram for the position of second vice chair of the Upper Canada District School Board. Do you accept the nomination? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. The second nomination is uh, John McAllister is nominated John McAllister for the position of second vice chair of the Upper Canada District School Board. John, do you accept the? Thank you. I do. And the third, I, Susan Richards, nominate David McDonald for the position of second vice chair of the Upper Canada District School Board. Trustee McDonald, accept? Yes. Thank you very much. So I have the three nominations. Do I have any other nominations? Are there any further <coughs> nominations? Are there any further nominations? Okay, seeing there are none. Pardon me? I need a motion that we declare the nominations closed. Moved by Trustee Karkner, seconded by Trustee Wendy McPherson. Cast your votes, please. Uh, carries thank you so we do have an election for this position so the first requirement is that we have appointed two individuals <coughs> uh, from administration as scrutineers director mr. chair that would be superintendent Coombs and that would be superintendent Allen thank you very much uh, each candidate is given an opportunity to address the board for three minutes in the order in which the nominations were received and during that time um, uh, Lisa, these, the order that I had was the order I just read them out in? Yes. Thank you. Um, <coughs> so each, each candidate will have three minutes to, to uh, make a presentation to, to the trustees. When all the candidates have spoken, ballots will be distributed and then collected, and then the scrutineers will leave the room. Um, they will provide me with the results of that vote when they return. So the first speaker, John, John, is Trustee Cram. Turn the floor over to you. Uh, thank you, Chair, and I won't, I won't take three minutes. Um, I decided to uh, seek the uh, second vice chair to offer something different to the board. I respect the work that uh, Trustee McDonald has done for the last uh, six, eight, ten years, David. Um, and has done a wonderful job. I uh, just think it's time for a change. And uh, you have three good candidates in front of you, and I uh, think you have a hard choice to make. Thank you. <coughs> Trustee McAllister. Good evening, trustees, and staff, and guests. I'm presenting my, my name as a candidate for the position of uh, second vice. The bylaws uh, of the Upper Canada District School Board and the, ed and the Education Act stipulate the, uh, the role of the chair and by default the roles of the vice chairs. These involve uh, two main areas, management council and uh, meetings of the board and leadership and relationship building between trustees and the director. So firstly, with regard to management council, management council meets uh, to set the board meeting agendas and to facilitate relations between administration and the board. I see my role in working with the chair, the first vice chair, and the director in establishing a workable and progressive agenda for all meetings. I would assist trustees where necessary to advance their own motions to ensure successful resolutions. And secondly, the first and second uh, vice chairs assist the chair at meetings and replace him or her in his or her absence. Win or lose, I will continue to be me and will continue to promote and advance the cause of public education in Upper Canada and 
in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee McAllister. And Trustee McDonald. Thank you. <clears throat> as many of you know, and as pointed out by, uh, by Trustee Krim, I've been a trustee for, for a long time, and <clears throat> the normal thing to do is to speak about your experience and accomplishments. Um, but when reflecting upon this, I know that many of us around the table have many accomplishments and, and many uh, different experiences that are no different or no less impressive of my own. When I was reflecting about why I was seeking this re-election, <clears throat> two things stand out for me. And that's diversity and stability. First, as a, as a democratic institution, and more particularly as a school board, we're challenged with difficult issues from time to time. We benefit from diversity. Diversity often involves culture or gender. <clears throat> but I also think we need to be mindful of ensuring different ways of thinking about things are represented. We all know that people's backgrounds and careers greatly shape their way of thinking. I offer you a very diverse background and one that brings experiences outside of the education sector. And secondly, we are entering an election year and many of us undoubtedly <coughs> are contemplating whether we're going to run again as a trustee. And some of us have already made those decisions. This, still, this board still has much work to do. I think it's with those decisions and with that work, I'd like to see stability within this current term. Many will decide to run again, and at that time next year, we have an opportunity to make changes. My choice to seek re-election is about bringing stability and continued diversity to our governance. I thank you today for your support thus far in my term as a second vice chair. I hope that I may continue to have your support in this coming year. Thank you. So at this point, we will be passing out ballots. She knows that. Uh, certainly. Car Carol just wants to say a few things. While we're waiting, it's probably a good time. If you want yeah. to say okay. things, just say things. Uh, I j trustees, I just wanted to thank you uh, for allowing me to remain in the position of first vice chair. Um, it's a position that uh, I feel it's a position of support for the chair. And I believe that I have tried my best to do that uh, as the years have gone on in, in the position of first vice. Uh, it's difficult when you've got two guys like this bookending me, and uh, <laughs> uh, I think we survived it. <laughs> you know, you're not bad, Martha. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you for your vote of confidence. I'll do my best again. Exactly. They are sending it in to someone. Oh, they send it in like to an email. Ah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> They said it's an email, I guess, to the scrutineers. Right. So you have the process with the trustees after what happened? We're not just the procedure. The votes returned. Well, if it's a clear majority, then it's... But if it's not a clear majority, then it's a clear majority. 
if you want. It's going to be the worst thing for my life. Okay, is there anybody else? Well, nobody's going to do it for me. You can argue to Probably. That's it. Maybe the second one, but it's not a clear majority. He probably would, but I think he's, 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 he's going to be 88. He's going to be replacing him eventually. <laughs> <clears throat> I'd uh, first like to thank our scrutineers. Thank you for doing that. Um, we do not uh, need to go any further. We have a, a clear uh, a vote on a candidate. Uh, I'd like to first thank all three candidates for putting their, their names forward. I think it, it says a lot um, about the, the depth that we have in this board and, and people that are, are willing to and wanting to step forward. So thank you very much, each of you. The uh, second vice chair position goes to David McDonald. Congratulations. Mr. Chair, can you make that an, an unanimous vote? I've just asked John if he's willing to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Thank you very much. Noted. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. 
Uh, I need a motion that the ballots for the election of chair, first vice chair, second vice chair be destroyed. Moved by Trustee Bill McPherson, seconded by Trustee McDonald. Ask for votes, please. <clears throat> Second Vice Chair McDonald, you have you want to make any comments or you you're fine? Yeah, that would be good too. I just you know thank you for your support and um, I appreciate the uh, work of the two gentlemen that uh, that decided to put their name forward and I think that uh, keeps everyone honest whenever we have that opportunity to, uh, to uh, have a choice. So I appreciate that and thank you for putting your names forward. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the second item, which is, uh, I believe I'm done with it so far. Good. Moving on to the 2016-17 Director's Annual Report, and I'll turn this over to Director Sliwa. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good evening again, Trustees. Uh, it's certainly a, a, a pleasure to bring forward to you this report from the 2016-2017 school year. Um, uh, we made sure that the report covered uh, a variety of topics that we believe was uh, instrumental to the, um, uh, the big picture of what occurred during that academic year. Before I go any further, I want to uh, certainly acknowledge two key staff that are extremely task-oriented to ensure that the material uh, was produced that you have uh, in front of you this evening on time and has the beautiful presence that it does. So I want to thank Andrea Wallacek and Mark Calder for their uh, contribution to the project and their patience um, through the many, many drafts that we went through to get, uh, get to this final output. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen of the board, tonight this report starts and ends with photos of our students. It's our staff's report to communicate to you and to the Ministry of Education, the overall purpose and our implementation efforts and the results of our work from 16-17. Uh, this is a big picture snapshot that I'd like to share with you tonight about moral purpose and virtual actions that staff have taken on your behalf uh, so that we could properly serve our students. I'd like to direct you to page six, which is uh, a very key point in the, uh, in, in the report because last year, uh, among all the activities that the Board of Trustees was involved in, part of that was a refresh and a renewal of the Board's strategic plan and strategic directions and its own work plan as well. This report then is about deeds and not just about words because we believe that, that those deeds made a significant difference for our students. And page six is really our basis for launching all the work that Upper Canadians do in our school district. And we certainly commit to that ongoing um, uh, strength of the acronym of CREW, which for us is what gets us closer to student achievement and student well-being in our school district. Uh, the report breaks uh, out into four different areas in, in a line with C, R, E, and W for crew. If you look at page seven, which is our, our beginning to unpack that part of the report, staff sought in this report to show crew in the light of our day-to-day -day realities, and that's what I, I certainly think that we accomplished on behalf of, of this presentation tonight. The C in collaboration is a, a key message that says we cannot do this important work about student achievement and about student well-being without the help and support of others. And the board certainly has brought that to our attention in terms of their public dialogue that they've had uh, over the past uh, many months last year, and that we know that when we collaborate with others, we help grow our students as active and informed citizens. You'll notice that in the section on collaboration, there's a great deal of focus on um, how we are working with others in the community uh, in our school district to help develop the civic uh, selves that we want our students to be. Canada 150, our iLEAD program that is a focus on supporting and growing the leadership capacities of Indigenous students in our school district, our service clubs and local charities and how we committed to work with them and on their behalf because they know that they help our students, their families and our communities as well. <coughs> Mr. Chair, as well, if we go to page 11 and 10, uh, that begins the section on resources. And we highlight resources in this report since these are the means to which enables the educational ends that the board wishes to see happen in our schools and on behalf of our students. We're grateful to the Ministry of Education, 
who provides uh, the funding and resources through the public purse that in the end uh, allows us to engage uh, the types of things that we desire on behalf of our schools and our students. A great example of that is on page 10 where the board will recall that we received over $53 million in funding to actually commit to the build for the future vision that the board had articulated through some very um, important dialogues last year. We also, in uh, this section on resources, take a broader view of resources beyond financial resources, and I hope that trustees would see that as they get a chance to look over the report. We want to provide examples of how we seek to conserve the resources that we have, whether it's hydroelectricity or water that um, our schools use, or how we seek to grow and develop our human resources, who we really rely on in terms of de developing and de delivering educational programs in our schools district. And there's many examples that we could choose from, and here are some significant ones that we think that we could share with you from across our district from last year. Trustees, as you all know, um, the educational programs are a key focus in the report because it is core business for the school district and the school board. If you take a look at page 14 and 15 where we begin to look at um, the educational programs that the school board had committed to and had uh, invested in this past school year, uh, you'll see a variety of works where we're seeking to get the basics right about reading, writing, arithmetic, and self-care. If we do these things, if we follow your uh, vision and uh, your direction closely, then we know that our students will achieve what we really desire for them to be well prepared for leading and living a, a good life, which is what we really desire. Again, we had many examples as a staff that we could uh, use and cite in this portion of the report. One of the hardest things about creating a, a, a sort of an annual overview is trying to choose <coughs> from so many great choices of what happens to your um, uh, direction, your vision, your planning, and the resources that you allocate to staff to proceed with those, uh, those key pieces of work. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about wellness and well-being because I know it matters to our board, it matters to our parents, our schools, and our staff, and certainly to our students. Beginning on page 17 of the report, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see our focus on wellness and it's an effort to reduce the gap in healthy lifestyles that parents and concerned adults have about the next generation of family members, neighbors, and co-workers and community members. Our focus is on physical, emotional health, and building on the respect and dignity of others, which is all part of leading a healthy, respectful, and um, a, a life that's worth living. We have, again, many examples to choose from. Uh, we're really pleased that our board for uh, a number of years has been leading in this area around well-being, diversity, and inclusivity. And we're pleased to share with you the examples that we could um, uh, do a short list from, from this past school year as well. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, on pages 19 and uh, up to pages uh, 25, you'll see examples of um, the report out that we do annually on our students' efforts to show their learning on provincial assessments. This information, along with the information that our schools share with parents through report cards and anecdotal reports, parent-teacher interviews, notes home, communication journals, phone calls and emails, all are part of our work to show that we are caring and counting how our students are achieving in their academic programs and in terms of their learning skills and in terms of their human development as well. It's important that we identify these measures that we do provincially as well as what we do at the school level uh, through the formal reporting periods, informal reporting periods, and through our conversations with parents and students. As the board knows, we do bring that information back to our community annually, both through press releases and as well through, um, uh, through formal reports to the board. Uh, Mr. Chair, finally, on page 27, we close off the annual report with profiles in excellence. Uh, we celebrate our students' achievement. This year it's Cade, Zach, Eric, Derishin, Doc, Sarah, Isabella, Joshua, Stephanie, Tonka, and Alina. These are 11 students that we've highlighted in this year's report who have an impressive range of accomplishments 
very diverse, different programs in their community, at their school, with their peers, and what they do in their own personal lives. We're so proud of them, and they deserve recognition. All 27,000 of our students deserve that attention and support, and this is what it looks like at the end of the road after their 14 years with us. We also want to highlight the staff, the volunteers, our board of trustees who together work and support these students, all 27,000 of our students in fact, in what we desire for them as they practice and prepare for a successful life. I know that this is um, a lot of information to digest this evening. We hope uh, on behalf of the staff that you take a, a careful look at this. We're so proud of what we do in our schools. We're so proud of our students and our staff accomplishment. We're so proud and grateful for our trustees who make uh, time for us to talk about uh, students being at the center of our work, the resources that we need to support their learning and their success. And we really do appreciate bringing this report to you from all the good things that happened last year and all the noteworthy um, focus for discussion that defined how we uh, addressed uh, learning and living in our schools last year. Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back over to you to see if there's any questions. Director, thank you very much. I will open it up to comments or questions. So I know that this will be a public document, but do we have any intention to send that, this to municipalities um, for circulation so that they would have that available for the, um, the members and, and their, in their offices, I guess, for the general public? Thank you for the question, Mr. Chair, through you. Uh, we have an annual uh, mailing list to uh, a variety of stakeholder groups. We do have our municipalities and municipal partners as part of that group. Uh, they do the courtesy of sharing with us uh, their um, year-end reports and strategic uh, thinking, and we wish to do the same so that they can see um, what we're doing on behalf of their communities as well. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Bill McPherson. I have just a question. Would that be in an electronic format, or will we be sending hard copies? Um, my preference myself is electronic format, and um, it may accelerate the sharing, you might say. Mr. Chair, through you, uh, our uh, current business practice is electronic copies, and that way the organizations that receive this can decide how they would wish to distribute that and uh, in what a number and what amount. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Thank you very much for that report. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Okay, the final motion that I need is a motion that the organizational meeting be adjourned. Uh, being uh, moved by Trustee Wendy McPherson and Trustee Bill McPherson. I ask you to cast your votes. I'm sure that carries. I thank everyone and um, safe travels for those that are traveling. And the rest of you, I'll see you soon. So thank you very much. We'll see everyone next week. Thanks.